Ta -da. We have side windows and a soft top, or soft top frame at least. Yeah, I installed them today during the work hours, so as you know, I don't shoot video during work hours because it's very noisy here. But uh, there was uh, nothing complicated. I just installed the frame by mounting it with those screws over there and I installed here. Here I'm going to show you a little bit more what I did because I had to take a little bit of time to figure it out. So I might save some time to somebody, for example Cutworm. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> installed the windows in the doors. And because I already done that before, I prefitted everything before we sent everything to paint. And uh, now everything lines up. I remember I had some troubles aligning the frame this way before, but now actually everything came exactly where it is and I was able to just... Uh, let me open the door. So I just tightened these screws here uh, and now the frame is nice and solid where it's supposed to be. So what I was looking at, for me, that was important. This gap to be parallel and this gap to be parallel. So that matches perfectly on this side. So I'm happy. I had to realign the door a little bit because for some reason in the, in the body shop, they um, had to pull the door for some reason. I don't know why when they painted the car, so I had to realign it again. It was a little bit high here, now it matches perfectly. The gap is good, and this gap is good. Let me show you the other side. And on this side, there's just a little difference here on the gap, but that's something I can live with. And this gap here is perfect too. So let me show you here was the situation. Okay. So inside here you have one of these that is because now I, I put the aluminum cover on top, but uh, you have two of these to go here and there, and they are handed. They have left and right ones. You see here this uh, slope, or I don't know what should I call it. Yeah, the higher. The higher side needs to be towards the center and the lower, the one that goes, that wedges down is uh, to the side. So this goes on this side and this one goes on the other side. These are from a different windshield frame. I took them from another windshield frame that we had a spare one. So that goes underneath, then this comes on top. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but actually I'm going to move the camera. And of course these handles are handed too, because in they have to be in this position, vertical, which when, when this flips the other way around, this points to, to the front, so this can go inside that part, so this goes inside this part, like that, and when you turn the handle, this slides on this slope, the sloped part here, and pushes the uh, frame down, so that's how it works. And that's the whole thing, but it took me a while to figure out which one is left, which one is right, so I decided to show it here so everybody knows now. And now when you close the frame, you see this part goes inside this, and there must be a gasket here which is missing now, so I just put this uh, piece of rubber there to represent the thickness of the gasket, and this locks it. It's a little bit sloppy now, because the whole frame needs to be a little bit repaired and cleaned and painted, but I just put it here for text, test fit for the windshield frame, because that was important for me. Now I know that everything is fine, so I can take it out or leave it for now, I don't care. All right, next I was uh, thinking I was going to start with the uh, dash and with all this wiring there, but uh, actually I still don't have the wooden dash. Jake and uh, his assistant are doing something with it, some magic, so uh, that's fine. I still have other things to do, so I'm going to jump on the doors and I'm going to do the top of the doors. Like, uh, I know that many people are looking forward to this. 
uh, how am I going to install this uh, rubber seal on the outside and this uh, fuzzy seal on the inside and to be honest I'm not looking forward to it but I will have to deal with that so I know that the main concern here is that it is very tight and there are some little clips that you have to install there and the glass is on the way so I'm thinking the first step here would be to do this Ta -da! right that's gonna give me a little bit more access yeah so you know I, the the glass was out for a long time and i just fitted it now but i didn't seal it in any way uh, usually it gets sealed here with a special seal that you buy from most motors or from other suppliers but what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna use Eurotape stuff that they use to seal the windows the windshields and uh, stuff so i think i'm gonna use that to seal the uh, actual glass to this rail later so for now I'm going to keep the glass off so I can put my fingers inside here and install the clips. But before that, before I start installing the clips, you know there is a, a finisher here. And this is the one from the other door. Actually, I don't have the one from this door. It must be this shape, but actually it is like this. Anyways, you can imagine what it was. There was this thing here, which I really dislike. So for sure, we decided that we're not going to install these back. So we were debating whether we should do just regular vinyl because some of the doors, some of the TR6s, I don't know, the early or the late ones come with this part just wrapped in vinyl like that. So we were debating whether we should do vinyl only or our Korean carpenter here in the shop, he's from uh, South Korea, he's a very talented guy, so he made these for us. It, this is a hardwood, I don't know what kind of hardwood, but it's hardwood that we were going to finish nicely and we were going to install it here, but then actually we decided that we're going to keep it just painted. We're going to just polish it, we're not even going to do anything here, we're going to keep it as it is and in this case I can go straight to installing the rubber seal outside and the fuzzy seal inside. The only thing is now, for some reason, it is a little bit too long. I think I have to cut the rubber here and at the front, yeah. Okay, now it fits perfectly inside. So, I don't know how many clips are here. One set is 14. You need 14 for the whole car, so this means 7 per door, which means three and a half per side <laughs> okay i'm gonna do four because i have some clips from before oh actually one two three four five six seven oh my god so it's 14 per door ah you see so if you look carefully here there are places for these little clips uh where they go this one the first one is very tricky because i don't know if you see here but it is right where my rail for the window ends so we'll start with this one the trickiest one i think i'll have to put it on and then slide it that way okay yeah and now all the other ones we can just measure from there so you see the rubber comes here, well, that's very loose, maybe I shouldn't do it there, yeah, you know what, that's a mistake, I shouldn't put it here because it's not gonna hold, yeah, that's not gonna hold here for sure, I'd better put it somewhere else, this one I'm gonna put it somewhere here, let's say. And I'll try to push this one even further. Okay, that's better, I think. Okay, and I'll put in the same places, but on the other side now, these other ones, the same thing on this side.
And now we can try and fit the rubber. Well, they are in now. But the other problem is that when they are in, this rubber is too far, too deep inside. There is a lip that is supposed to come over the over the skin, but it's it looks like it is going inside. Maybe when the glass is keeping it like that, you see this lip has to come outside. Anyways, let's see the fuzzy thing. This has no rubber on the lip underneath. I hope that's gonna make it easier for me. But let's see. Yep. So now let's see how we're gonna fit the glass inside. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's easier to put the clips on without the glass, but then the glass needs to be inside at least for the rubber. Let's see. You know what guys, I have another idea. I'm taking those off. We have this double-sided tape that's coming from Word. That's not a product uh, advertisement, but uh, we are really happy with this tape because we are using it in many different places in our limousine builds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this in half because it's a little bit too wide. But I know from experience that this tape sticks very well. So I'm gonna stick it here to this. A little bit too short. Okay. And let's go to the car now. Okay, so now that this this side is started, this is where we should start from. I'm gonna put it inside. The way. And I'm just gonna hold it where I want it and start pulling this. Okay, that's extremely solid now. This tape, we use it to glue moldings outside on the limousines and stuff like that, labels, and they stay forever. This tape is really strong, so I, am, I regret that I didn't start with, with that. I thought the clips were gonna be much easier. Anyways, let's see if we can put the glass now. All right, and now, finally, let's see if we can put the fuzzy thing which shouldn't be a problem if this now creates improvements I don't know it goes in no problem I'm gonna 
Thank you. Now to make sure it's on the right place, we're going to lift it all the way up. And yeah, that's where it's supposed to be. So I lifted it all the way up and made sure that this gap is still uh, as I wanted it to be. And that's how I'm going to let it dry now till tomorrow. And now, and now I can go to the other side. Okay, so next I wanted to prepare everything under the dash and um, install whatever needed to be installed there so I can finally install the wooden dash with the gauges and, and you can see it here on the background that the wooden dash was ready from Jake you will see later how nicely he finished it so uh, I started with those um, hoses and with the vents that go, for the that go in the dash and uh, in the footwell and these are really tricky so I decided first to test it with the original hoses even though they were all damaged and uh, later I was gonna switch them to and that was during the day again so that's why I didn't talk during the video I'm gonna reduce the volume and I'm gonna do a little bit of voiceover here something that I haven't done for a long time <laughs> and this is how much hose I have prepared do you think I have enough? So once I was sure I knew what I was doing, I changed all the hoses with a new one and uh, then I installed them where they belong. And this is a really uh, tricky job, like I said, because they have to loop around themselves, the hoses I mean, and uh, take a really weird route. But uh, I'm going to show you maybe on the other side, because on the driver's side it's uh, very tight and cannot be seen on the other side at least without the glove box you can see what's happening okay here you can see how i had to loop it so it can go in properly one of the vents points down to your feet and the other, the empty hose goes to the vent that is already installed on the dash. And this is a closer view, so you can see from the heater box there is this hose coming out and uh, splitting in two and then one of them loops around and points to your feet and the other one goes to the dash. Once the air ducts were ready, I had to install also the glove box because uh, that would be impossible to be done after the dash is in place. So uh, I had to install the light for the glove box. And there's a little plate that goes to the side of the, glo of the glove box, which I painted and I installed in place with a couple of rivets. The actual light has a very simple wiring. There's a light fixture hanging on, uh, I think it was purple with white wire, mm -hmm. which is always live. And the other wire, which is really short, goes to the switch, which switch is uh, uh, grounded to the dash. That's why I'm filing it here a little bit, so it can make uh, a good contact. So 
the light gets uh, ground from the switch and that's how it lights up when you open the, the glove box door. Now to be able to put the glove box on though, it was uh, very tight so I had to remove again some of the hoses of the air ducts that I have already installed but uh, it worked well finally and then at the end I had just to put the light on the side on the little plate that I installed with the rivets on the side of the glove box and everything worked well. And the last thing before the wooden dash are these uh, dash pads that uh, are brand new but unfortunately somebody did them on a Friday or on a Monday, I'm not really sure but there's a lot of bulk of the vinyl at the back which didn't uh, allow me to sit it uh, properly on the metal dash so finally I decided to take them out and do something about this uh, horrible wrapping. So as you can see here, all this material was supposed to be trimmed back much shorter and glued properly around the padding and uh, that's what I decided to do. I just sprayed glue first and then I trimmed it and then with a little bit of heat I managed to form it nicely and glue it to the back of the padding and this way there was no bulk behind it and there was a really nice shape at the front. And without the bulk at the back it was much easier to install them now. They are just three rods with uh, three little nuts at the back. Again I had to remove the vent underneath <laughs> for one of the nuts but uh, well that's uh, when you don't know what you're doing you have to do it two times or three times <laughs> sometimes. But anyways it uh, sat properly and I was really happy with it. So I did the same thing on the other side. I was gonna say it, w it is finally nice and quiet here but the neighbors are still here and they're a little bit noisy but, but it is much better than what it was so far so I, I probably voice over it whatever I did today or I played some music I don't know you're gonna tell me what I did now for the rest of the day or the rest of the night I can finally talk and explain what I'm doing. So the glove box is installed, all the hoses underneath the, for the air vents are installed, the padding under the dash is installed, this side I installed too, and now we are into wiring. So I'm, uh, my intention now is to connect these wires over here to the switches on the column, on the steering column, and uh, if I can, if I'm able to do that tonight, I'm gonna be really happy. And then all these wires need to be connected to the gauges and stuff like that. But we'll I'm actually tired and I wanted to go home. But uh, this is what I drove to work today. And outside, outside it just stopped raining. Actually, it's still raining a little bit. But until 15 minutes ago, it was pouring. It was pouring rain, and. If you can see those clouds, they were just above us and this is the direction I need to go in later tonight. So I'm waiting for the rain to stop and for the streets to dry a little bit so I can drive home. Okay, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for tonight because, because the sun is up, the sky is still dark in that direction, but actually I'm not going that direction, I'm going this direction and in this direction it is already nice and sunny so I'm okay to go home so I think uh, since I'm going home I'm also gonna cut the video here and I'm gonna finish this episode because there's a lot of material already for editing 
and I think that's more than enough for one episode actually so yeah that's gonna be it for today guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and commenting and I'll see you in the next one when probably we're gonna start installing the dash with the gauges so see you next time bye